Typically, when we need to share data with users on a network, we share a drive or directory from one system and grant users access to it. Access to the shared folder relies on that system being powered on and connected to the network. If something happens to that system, users will lose access as well. However, today we'll store the shared folder on the MicroTik router, so it won't depend on any other system. Just a quick note, most MicroTik routers don't have much disk space. For this process, you'll need a router with a USB port to connect a flash drive or external hard drive and create a shared folder with enough storage. Let's get started. I'm using a MicroTik RB951 router and connected to it via Winbox. No matter the model, the process is the same. First, I go to the IP menu, then to the SMB submenu. SMB, server message block, is a network protocol for transferring files between systems. Windows systems views SMB protocol for file sharing and MicroTik router OS supports it as well. From here, I come enable SMB. If I'm on a domain network with Active Directory, I'll enter the domain address here. If it's a work group, no changes are needed. I can also add a comment here too. One important point. If the Allow Guest option is enabled, all systems can access the shared folder without authentication. We don't want that, so I disable the Allow Guest option. I also adjust the interface settings. By default, it's providing the service on all interfaces, including the One interface. Ether one in my case. I want the service to be available only on the bridge. By default, MicroTik created a bridge and all interfaces except Ether one, the one, are part of it. So I assign the service to the bridge, ensuring it only operates within my internal network. I click Apply, but let's check what it's sharing. Here I click on Share. You'll see a directory called Pop, and I can also see it in the Files menu. This directory will be shared on the network with up to 10 people able to access it simultaneously. Of course, I can open and edit it as well. Now I'll close this and go to Users to create a new user. To access the shared folder, I enter a specific username. I'll set the username as Ramtin and the password as 1. If the read-only option is checked, the user connecting to the shared folder with these credentials will only be able to view or copy the files without making any changes. I uncheck this option and click Apply. Now let's switch to Windows. Here's the MicroTik IP. To access the shared folder, I open and explore a window, type two backslashes, followed by the MicroTik IP, and press Enter. It will then prompt me for a username and password. I enter the username and my password. Now this is my shared folder. From here, I can right-click on it and choose to map it as a network drive, for example, as drive Z. I click Finish, and now, as you can see, I have a Z drive in my computer, which is the shared folder. I create a directory named test inside it, and then create a file called test.txt. Let's go back to MicroTik. In the Files menu, you can see the test folder and the test.txt file we created. This shows that everything worked successfully. We've easily created and accessed a shared folder from Windows. However, there's a problem. Our router has limited disk space. Right now, the router has 128 megabytes, and 18 megabytes are already used, so it's not very practical. If I have a router with a USB port, I can connect an external hard drive or flash drive to it and use the storage as a file share. Here, I have a 32 gigabytes flash drive, and I'm going to connect it to the router to see what happens. It should be recognized here. Yes, this is my USB disk. Now I can continue. I'll connect the USB to my Windows system for a moment and create a directory on it. Let me go to my computer. OK, here I'll create a folder. Let's give it a unique name. For example, netadmin plus. All right, this folder is going to be my shared folder. Now I've disconnected the flash drive again, and I'm connecting it to my MicroTik. All right, now let's see what we can do here. Here we have the netadmin plus directory. I go back to the SMB settings, open the IP menu, then SMB, and go to Shares. I click on Add. Actually, I'll disable this one. I don't want to share pub. I click Add and say the name can stay as Share 1. It doesn't matter. It asks me for the directory in this field. Let's go to the Files menu and take a look. I need to copy this path exactly. I can easily copy it from here. I'll leave the maximum session at 10. 
This is the path I copied from the Files menu. I click Apply and OK. Now I'll go into this shared folder. The previous one is now disconnected. I click on the new one to view and access it. Now we have Share One. I could change its name here. For example, rename it to NetAdmin Plus. After refreshing, you'll see it's updated to NetAdmin Plus. Now I'll map it again and name it Drive Y, for instance. Now, I have this one connected to the network again. The previous shared folder no longer works since we deactivated it. I'll disconnect it from here. Now let's create another Notepad file, and this time let's name it Test2. I'll go back to the Files menu and we should be able to see it. Let me exit the detail mode. Yeah, here it is, my text file named Test2. We were able to do all of this quite easily, but there's just one thing to keep in mind. On MicroTik routers, especially the ones with MIPS BE CPU architecture, only flash drives formatted as FAT32 or XFAT are recognized. If you format the drive as NTFS, it won't be detected, so make sure to format it as FAT32 or XFAT. Now, two important notes. First, MicroTik didn't design this feature specifically for setting up shared folders on a network. It's more commonly used for other purposes, but in a small network setup, it works perfectly for creating a shared folder without needing another system. Second, always make sure to back up the contents of this shared folder. It's a good practice to connect the drive to a system once a week, for instance, and back up the data elsewhere. You can use the previous videos to write a script that automatically backs up this shared folder for you, whether it uploads to the cloud, sends it via email, or performs other backup tasks. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. This was Ramtin from NetAdmin Hub. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, leave your questions in the comments, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel to support me. Your support motivates me to continue creating more helpful content. Thank you, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.